Let's go back to the phones. Lori is on the line from Nashville, Tennessee. Lori, what's your question for Pastor Adriel? Okay. Hi, Bill. Hi, Pastor Adriel. My question has to do with Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. And 14 talks about if you forgive men who sin against you, God will forgive you. 15 says if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. My question is, does that mean that God, if God does not forgive your sins, that that is, in, in essence, a judgment that will keep that person from spending eternal life with God? Hmm. Lori, thank you for that question. So this, this comes uh, right after Jesus gave the Lord's Prayer in the context of the Sermon on the Mount. Let me just read Jesus' words, verse 14 of Matthew 6, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I, there was a study that was recently done. I think it, it might have been the Barna Group. Um, but they, they took a poll of Christians on, on forgiveness. And I think it was something like one in four or two in four um, believers, Christians, say that there's somebody in their life who they, who they just can't forgive, who they're not willing to forgive. Um, and so, you know, it, it highlights just the, the challenge here and the fact that for, for many people, I think it was C.S. Lewis who said, you know, forgiveness is, is a great thing until you have somebody to forgive. And, and then it becomes something that's so difficult for us. But one of the things we see over and over again in the Gospels, Lori, is that our forgiveness of others should flow from the forgiveness that we have received from Jesus. And so if, if we're not forgiving, um, if we're hard-hearted and unwilling to extend mercy, in one sense it's a sign of the fact that there, there's something about the gospel that's not com, uh, computing in our, in our minds. You think of the parable that's given in Matthew chapter 18, the parable of the unforgiving servant. You know, the text starts off in verse 21, Peter came up to Jesus and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. In other words, you, you just keep on forgiving. And then he, he tells a parable which highlights um, the reality of the fact that God has forgiven us this immense debt of sin. When we go to God asking for forgiveness and he washes away all of our sins and then a, a brother or sister sins against us, it could be a very grievous sin, um, but still in, in comparison to our offenses toward a holy God, right, uh, we've been forgiven, therefore we should be a people who forgive. And, and so the way I understand that text in, in Matthew chapter 6 is, is not to say that, you know, you're forgiven, you're saved, and then if you don't forgive somebody, you're not saved anymore. Um, I know that forgiveness is a struggle that, that many um, of us have, um, but what it's highlighting is the fact that the person who doesn't forgive, who isn't ultimately forgiven, doesn't understand the very basics of the gospel, because if we did... If we grasped the mercy of God to us in his son, Jesus, and if we meditate upon, meditated upon that and knew it, um, then we would be a people willing to extend that mercy and grace, that forgiveness to others. Uh, now, now, again, this, this opens the door for a lot, uh, you know, a, a more complex, um, I think, conversation related to forgiveness, um, reconciliation, because there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. Lori, as Christians, we always are called to forgive from the heart based on the forgiveness that we've received, but we can't reconcile with the people who have sinned against us unless they recognize that they've sinned, unless there's repentance. Um, and then even beyond that, there's this step of restoration, restoring the, the relationship, which isn't always even possible. But for our part, we are always called, I believe, to forgive. And so um, if that's something that you're struggling with, and I know as I'm, as I'm saying this, that there are many listening right now who they do, I mean, there's someone maybe that they're thinking about right now, and they just think, oh, man, I have such a hard time with that person. I would just say, instead of focusing on that person, on the offense, meditate upon the love of Jesus for sinners, the love of Jesus for you, and how he has forgiven you, and pray and say, Lord, help me to extend that same grace that you have shown to me to those who have sinned against me. Forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors as well. And, and in one sense, it's this beautiful reminder of, look, if, if we 
sinful human beings can extend mercy and grace to each other, how much more can we be sure of the fact that the God who, who is abundant in mercy and steadfast love is going to extend his forgiveness to us, uh, we who forgive um, those who have sinned against us. You can rest assured in that because God is more gracious than we, than we can ever be. Um, he's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And so may the Lord fill your heart with the knowledge of that love and forgiveness so that you might show it to others as well.